Hello everyone and welcome to the DevScope channel. Join me today as we are going to learn how to replace values efficiently on Power Query. First, I will present a simple example to show you the mechanics of the technique and then we are going to apply that same technique to a specific use case that is replacing strings with IDs. So here we are on Power Query, we have a flat table with a lot of columns, but we're going to focus here on the segment column. Our goal here is to replace every string in this column with a specific abbreviation. I've already done that, so I'm going to show you how did I do this efficiently. The first step is to establish a correspondence between the current values and the new values, and we do this by using a record. As you can see here, we have the current values, the current value in this case for government and then we have the new value that is gov and i did this for every single string in the column once you have once you have established the correspondence between these values we are going to use the table dot transform columns function where we are going to reference the segment column in, in this specific case and we are going to use the record dot field or default function the first argument will be the record and second and third will be the underline. What this function basically does is look for every value in the segment column, in this case, in the record, and return the correspondent value. If by any chance it doesn't find that value in the record, it returns the original value. So this is the basic mechanics of the technique. It's having a record with a correspondence between current values and new values, and then using the record.field or default function. So here we are on our use case that is replacing strings with IDs. Here we have the same table as, I, as I've showed you before, but now I've chosen to build some dimension tables, in this case for the country, segment and product column. As you can see here, just an example, here we have the distinct values of country and then the corresponding IDs. On a typical setup, what we would do would be to merge each dimension table to the fact table and then expand the ID column. As we have three tables, we will do this three times, which results in a total of six steps to bring in the IDs from the respective uh, dimensions. And one last step that is removing the columns that add the strings. So we have a total of seven steps to do to bring in the IDs to the fact table. Now I'm going to show you using the technique that you just learned. As you can see here, we went from seven steps to only one, with the help of the record.field or default function and a custom function that I built here to transform a table to a record. Now I will show you how to do this step by step on the original file. So, uh, our first step here is to establish a correspondence between the the current values, in this case the strings, and the new values. But we already have that in the dimension tables. Although we are not going to transform these tables to a record because we are going to use them later uh, in the model and uh, it's not a good practice to duplicate this table just to have a separate uh, record of this specific table. So we are going to build a function to do so. So I'm going to show you here how did I do this step by step. Our first step is to have the strings as column headers. So we will transpose the table. Then we just have to use first row as headers. And now we have to transform this table into a record. For that, there's a specific function that I'm going to show you. And here it is. You just have to use the function table dot to records, and it will transform the table into a record. Let's replace. Here we have. So now we have a record. In this case, a list of records. We still have to expand the the first record. So we can make this a little bit more efficient, also, just by taking the curly brackets and the zero from this step and then adding it to the previous step. Now we just have to delete this and 
and as you can see here we have a record of that table. Now we are going to, go to grab these last steps and build a function with, with them. So let's first create a folder for the function. Let's create a blank query. We'll call this function table to records. And now I already have the code for the function over here. I'm just going to paste it. And as you can see here, we have the three last steps that I showed you on the other table. And the only thing I had, I had to do is to add the let and then the name of the, the function, table to records, specify the argument that this function takes, and in the code that I that I brought from the other table, just I just had to replace here on the table dot transpose function the argument for the variable that this function is going to to take. So this is basically it to build that custom function. It's it's a a pretty simple function. Now, since we have this function, we can delete these steps that we no longer need. Okay, now we are going to duplicate this table. And now what we need to do is to use the record.field or default function. Let's just delete the merges we no longer need. And now if we open here advanced editor, we can go over here and I'll show you the final step. As you can see here, we I did basically the same as I did before, but the only difference here is that I did it for multiple columns. But the, um, the technique is the same. You reference the column you want to replace the values, you use the record.field or default function, and in this case, instead of having the record stated here in the advanced editor, we have the table to records function that is going to transform the dimension table we already have. And that is basically it. And I did this for the product and also the country uh, columns. Now let's just replace the step here, ID replacement. And as you can see here, we replaced the strings from three columns with just one step. Uh, that is all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos.